So when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, like I was saying, we were Kathy left and went to that early service because she likes that worship. So she goes to the worship of the end of the first service, and then she stays for the worship of the next service, or vice versa, whatever. It works. So I stayed in bed and then was going to go to the next service with her. And when I went to get up, the Lord spoke audibly to me, and I'm not kidding, just I'm wide awake, and I saw this giant hand above me. And so I sat up in the bed, and the Lord said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and you shall be promoted. And I, I saw God's hand, and I, so I just got under it. And I was a nobody. But look what has happened. And it was just like it was yesterday. I haven't changed a bit. I'm still the same person. But now the whole world is open to me. And really, because we have a, a TV studio with four high-definition TV cameras, five different TV sets, and I went ahead and, got, and paid everything off to the end of the year because I could. I mean, everybody that gives to me, you want me to use that money wisely, so why not just pay ahead? Everything's paid for. And so I can go and sit before a camera and I can reach 400,000 people without even leaving the building. And the same Holy Spirit that's here live is here on that TV camera, and I'm reaching and touching lives. So you hook yourself up with God in your life, and then there's multiple ways that God will bring income to you. There's multiple ways that healing will come to you. There's multiple ways that your relationships will increase. And then your, the plans and the purposes of God will not have to be pursued. They will come to you because you're yoked to your creator. Now, I'm not kidding. This is not story time. This is the way it is. Faith. It has substance. It's the title deed of what you hope for. So in the brokenness and humility is where the Lord will actually speak to you. And I can actually work with each of you individually, which is what I'm doing now. And I, I do this in a more intimate setting like this. And, you know, every spirit school we have all over the world, it fills up in about four days. So as soon as I announce it, it fills up in about four days. And people don't, it's getting around now, but people don't know it, that they're getting a free manual instead of paying $25 for the CD and the manual. They're getting it for free, and they're getting a free meal. They don't even know that. But they show up because they're hungry. And then they get it for free, and they get they get fed. But what it is, is I want to teach people how to yoke themselves to Jesus Christ. He's a real person that cares about you. But he, he said, we can do this together. But if you want to do it on your own, good luck with that. You know, And he doesn't believe in luck. But he really doesn't, he's not interested in people that are just, um, you know, rogue. Or they're just going, going on their own and um, you know, they wake up and they're an apostle, but they have no accountability. They've not had any track record. See, I will submit to an apostle, but I will also submit to an evangelist. Because to me, they're the governments of God. And um, I'm, I'm just telling you, in the scriptures, you can't see where one is greater than the other. I mean, if you're going to go by the order that they're written in, that's really messed up because Hebrew is backwards. And Greek... It's linear. It's, but see, he, Jesus was totally off all of that, those charts, because God's ways are cyclical. 
So where you start is where you end. God does everything from his throne. He never leaves his office. He doesn't even have to stand up. So everything he says comes back around to where he spoke it, comes right back around. So you don't really have to go anywhere to get it. But you have to be broken and you have to be humble and receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls, which is the word psyche. It's not spiritos. Your spirit is saved by the born-again experience. Your soul can be saved by the engrafted word, by being transformed by the renewing of your mind, psyche. But if you're not humble, you can't receive correction, instruction. I know this. Now, when I'm with my spiritual fathers, I spend hours with them, but I don't talk. So when I make a call or I go to dinner, I make an initial conversation, and then I, I ask a question. And then I just sit back, and it just goes from one subject to the other. And I just, when me and my wife are done, we go to our, our, our house, and we can't even breathe. We have to sit for at least an hour under what was just told us. Because there, there are people above me that you will never know the intimate things that happened to them that would blow you away. They'll never share it on TV. And so I sit there and I listen. But yet I have gone to dinner with these men and women. And I've watched others who somehow got access to him. I kid you not. For the, I sit for five hours and listen. This, these people sit for five hours and talk about themselves. They, they don't even give these men and women a chance to say anything. And then afterwards, you know, I'm asked, hey, what would you think of that guy? You know, like, I, I go, he, he didn't even let you talk. He didn't even tap in to what you know. And all I saw was big white teeth. So when you have a brokenness and a humility about you, you can receive instruction. And... I know this is a key because that centurion was just waiting for the word. And, you know, my friend, my, my friends that were snipers, you know, black ops, they would, they would be dumped out of an airplane in a foreign country. It would take them weeks to get into their spot. They would set up their rifle. And they would wait for a green light. When they got their green light, they would, get a, they would give a call. They'd say, do, do I have the shot? Can I have the shot? I got a green light. Yes or no? They say, take the shot. Bam. Folds up his stuff, goes to his extraction point, gets picked up. And within 24 hours, he's back at his house. But I didn't tell you that because we're, you know, we're not allowed to do that. But it's interesting when, when Southwest Airlines was hiring people, they, they hired military men to be the pilots for our company. You want to know why? Because they knew exactly what they were getting. <laughs> because the military trains them all the same. They learn to take orders. <laughs> they learn to follow orders, and they know how to give orders. Sila. <laughs> okay, so Jesus is the head of the angel army. I don't know if you know that. But he is actually head of it. And it's amazing. Can I tell you a little bit about that? When he goes into this command center, the angels are pulling books 
of the people that they're assigned to, and they're, 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 they're uh, strategizing on what they're going to do. And Jesus gives them the permission. They even can appear as a person. And, and this has happened to, to my, many of my fathers. You know, um, let's see, like 40, it was over 40 years ago, Jesse, Jesse worked for Shell Oil Company. And um, the Lord told him to quit. And he had this executive job. And they didn't, want him to, they didn't want him to quit. And he was an amazing manager. And they begged him not to quit. But he was told that he was called to be an evangelist. So he went home and he commanded his yellow phone on his wall to ring because he didn't even have one place to preach. So he told me, he said, I turned it, and he, he sh the yellow phone and he said, ring, and it rang. And that was his first invite. And he had this beat up Toyota. And he ran out of gas because some of the churches didn't even give him an offering. One, one church gave him a um, a Dr. Pepper as, as his offering. And so what he would do is he would leave late at night so that he could hit the 7-Elevens so that they were throwing away the hot dogs and the popcorn. And that's how he would eat. And um, he would not eat for a week. But see, you don't know that because you think he's just a prosperity preacher. But what, what you don't know is, is he left everything and was poor because he gave it all away. He was a millionaire as a, as a rock star. He gave it all away because he was Catholic, and he thought that if you were going to be a Christian, you had to be poor, so he gave it all away. And um, he said uh, he ran out of gas in the middle of the night because his love offering was a pat on the back, and um, he hadn't eaten in a week. And this, this man stopped with a tow truck, Literally, he watched the truck appear on the road. The man pulled a gas can out, filled his car up, got back in his truck and left. He said that would happen. The same guy, a couple years later, he was stuck in a snowdrift in another state, and the same truck and the same guy came and pulled him up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then he said, and then he said um, that the devil was trying to starve him out so that he would quit. But what it really did, the, he said the anointing got so strong that when he would walk into the church through the doors, demons would start screaming out of people as he's just walking up to put his Bible on the pulpit. And it started revivals. And then there was a person in a wheelchair, and he grabbed them and yanked them out of it. They went flying through the air, landed on her feet, and started dancing. <laughs> and so this church that was just, you know, under 100 people, he said the next night there was a mile and a half of cars waiting to get into the church. This is, it happened over and over again. So then... He would check in his hotel, and there'd be a knock on the door. And when he would open it, there'd be nobody there, but there'd be a plate of food. The devil started feeding him. You didn't get that. <laughs> because he was fasting all the time, uh, you know, forced fast. <laughs> so the devil started... Oh, I got all these stories that you won't hear. He, he'd walk into a church. He'd get up in the pulpit like this, and he'd watch all the band members and the choir walk by him. And there's nobody else up there. And so he go, he's getting ready to talk. And these two men, one on each side of him, walk by him. And the one turns around and smiles at him. And it's that same guy again. It's the angel. <laughs> 
And he said, hey, hear that, hear my angel. What happened was, is in the green room, the pastor said, just so you know, we don't believe in that fallen in the spirit stuff and all that stuff. We don't do that here, okay? So this angel stops right here, turns around and goes, watch this. <laughs> and they start walking through the crowd, and the one walks right toward that pastor. He gets thrown and falls down. The whole, the whole congregation falls at one time. But here's the thing. He said, Kevin, they fell through the wooden pews. We're laying this way under all the pews. So he waited and waited, and nobody got up. So he grabbed his Bible, and he got his book table guy, and they went home to the... To the... <laughs> That's happened numerous times. So he, he taught me, he taught me to, to just, just submit to God and, and do the work of the ministry and allow the supernatural to start to kick in. So this is under James 4.6 uh, in the middle, page 38, where I said, God resists the problem, but he gives grace to the humble. And I have bullet points there that I've studied every move of God and the men and women. And even, even Sid Roth, he told me, he, you know, I started, I watch everything he does. I'm, I'm, I'm learning from him. And I said, I noticed how you handle things. And I, so I told him, you know, and he said, man, you, that's, you've been watching. You're learning. I said, yeah, you, um, you go in a certain direction, and then you wait to see if the spirit sides with you on that. And then if not, he, he backs off of it. He goes, we're going to wait on that. And um, it wasn't the timing. See, he's really humble. Sid Roth is very humble. And he, 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 he goes in a certain direction. And it's amazing to me. Like, I, I want to know, like, why do they do the way they do? Why do they do this? You know, why, why do you restrict this? Why do you do this? He says, because this has happened eight times, and we had to draw the boundary there because we had to make a boundary because people always want to cross this thing. So that's why we do this. But at the time, I thought, why, why is it that way? And then I realized that they have been through it, and they know the boundaries and so they can help you if you'll be humble and listen. So you need authority. You need people to be over you to tell you what's going on. And you can assist. So my, my ministry is based on relationship. And I go to churches where I have a relationship. When I go for the first time, the Lord tells me if this is family or not. And then I make that on the calendar. And so I have recurring for the rest of our lives. You know, I never have to have any more meetings because I just return to the family in the different countries we're at. It's all about relationship. So the reason why these meetings are so powerful is because of relationship and because um, you, you are being led here. And you're learning in a more intimate setting. So, so I'm doing this because I know that the people that are attached to me that I've been assigned to are, are like a remnant, but they're humble. They're hungry, and they're, they want to learn, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so every night while I'm sleeping, I get 40 new students without a doubt, without exception. Every night, 40 more students are added to the school every night, and sometimes a hundred. Because people want to learn. But see, I'm yoked up to Jesus Christ. He's my hero. And he believes in me. And I believe in him, just like he believes in you. 
but it's because we're humble people. I already read Isaiah 57, 15, so on the Proverbs 22, 4, on the page 39 at the top. And here's this scripture verse that offends everybody, which is why I put it here. Um, it says, true humility and the fear of the Lord leads to riches. Oh my gosh, I said that in church. Riches, honor, and long life. Well, how many of you are interested in those three things? Okay, did you know that you're allowed to want honor, riches, and long life? But true humility and the fear of the Lord, which we're, we're talking about both of those, that's what leads to riches, honor, and long life. Proverbs 29, 23 says, pride ends in humiliation while humility brings honor. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, in the same way you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. All of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Oh, you know, not in this age of grace. God doesn't oppose people. Really? He opposes the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Did you know that you can't make a goat into a sheep? It's funny how goats, man, when you approach them, because I grew up and, you know, I worked on a farm. But it's funny how a goat, the minute you grab it, it is, it is d dug in and it's going to do exactly opposite of what you want. <laughs> exactly opposite. It plants its feet. But a lamb will let you pick it up. And it, if you're not the shepherd, it won't listen to you. It, it knows the voice of its shepherd. Just saying. <laughs> Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. Oh, it doesn't say money there. No, it says the sacrifice that he desires is a broken spirit. <laughs> you will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Just so you know, the same God of the old covenant that spoke that is the same God in the new covenant on the same throne. And it isn't even lunchtime in heaven yet on the first day. Nothing's happened differently. The same God that we serve, Jesus Christ, has just appeased the demands for the fallen man. But the, the covenant rights are still available, old and new. You see, the law revealed the, our inability to perform. The law reveals that. <sighs> wow. All the law did was revive sin to kill you. Sin revived and I died. That's what Paul said. Don't get mad at me. You see, everything was fine until the law came. Paul said, I was fine. <laughs> and then the law came. And now it's woe is me. He said, the things I want to do, I can't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. What a wretched man I am. But praise be unto God through Jesus Christ that there is therefore... Now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So he went from the last verse of chapter 7 of Romans to the first verse of Romans 8. That's what I just read. I read the overlap. It's just like the Old and the New Testament, chapter 7 of Romans and chapter 8 of Romans. God's, 
God knows your inabilities. You have no idea how much I've just helped you. It took me 20 years to find, at least 20, maybe 30, to figure this out. But because of the situations I went through, it humbled me when I should have humbled myself. Moving on. The Crucified Life, page 41, chapter 6. 